In this video, we are going to learn how to deserialize JSON into a dynamic object in C-Sharp. JSON deserialization in C-Sharp refers to the process of formatting .NET objects from a JSON string. Most of the time, this means creating strongly typed POCOS. However, there are certain situations where we may prefer flexibility over type inference. For example, cherry picking a small portion of a JSON data. Dealing with external JSON data whose structure is largely unknown or changes very often, etc. Dynamic deserialization comes into play in such cases. This doesn't necessarily mean the use of the language's inbuilt dynamic keyword. As you mentioned, there are other ways as well. We have three pathways to achieve this use of dynamic declarations, using anonymous subjects, and leveraging the power of JSON DOM. In this video, we will cover the first option, and in the next one, we will talk about the other two. We are going to see how we can do this using the native system.txt.json library and the popular newtsot.json library. So, we already have prepared application that we are going to use for our videos. Here, we can see two projects. The main one, and the testing project. Inside the main one, we can find two folders for the different libraries that we are going to use in these videos and also the movie stats file that we will use to extract the genre and the rating information from movie stats data coming as a JSON string. From the stats of Squid Game movie, we only want to cherry pick genre and the rating of IMDb or Rotten Tomatoes. So let's dive in. First of all, we want to explore a dynamic way. Newtonsoft library is quite convenient in this regard, having a long time support for dynamic. On the other hand, the native library has a different story and we will discuss it later. So let's start with the Newtonsoft library. As we can see, we already have it installed in the main project. So to start, we are going to add a new genre rating helper class in our project that holds our first deserialization routine and remove these namespaces. So let's make the class static and let's add our first public static method that returns a tuple of string Jean double IMDB and double rotten. Let's name the method using dynamic and provide a single string parameter. To extract a dynamic object, as always, we use the JSON convert class for the deserialization. A call to the deserialize object of dynamic type method gives us a plain object instance. Of course, we have to provide our JSON string as an argument. Under the hood, this object holds all the properties from the JSON tree. Because of dynamic declaration, we can directly access genre and the rating properties from there. We can even access the nested property rating.imdb in a natural way. So, let's do that. Let's extract genre by using our dynamic object and call the genre property. For IMDB, we are going to do almost the same thing. Just this time, we will use the rating and then IMDB property. Also, let's fetch rotten by using the dynamic object and the rating property. But this time, we will fetch Rotten Tomatoes as a dictionary item. As a side note, we use the null forgiving operator here to keep syntax clean and short. We will continue using it in this video where relevant. However, you should be cautious about using this in a real application. Finally, we will return our tuple that contains all the required elements. Now, to test this, 
we are going to create another class in the testing project and name it Newtonsoft JSON Unit Test. Let's again remove namespaces and make it public. Here, let's use the fact attribute to mark this method runnable by the test runner. And let's create our first test. Let's make it public, void, and name it when using dynamic, then dynamically retrieve genre and rating. So let's start by extracting a new JSON string from the movie stats dot squid game property. Then let's create a tuple variable with genre, IMDB and rotten elements and call the genre rating class and the use dynamic method where we will pass our JSON string. Finally, we can assert our results. So let's start with genre, where we evaluate that thriller is the genre of our movie. Also, let's use assert dot equal to assert that the 8.1 score is assigned to this movie on IMDb. Lastly, let's use the same class and the same method to assert the score, but this time from Rotten. Now, let's open the test explorer, run this test, and verify we get the result we desire. This is the most popular and widely used way for dynamic deserialization with Newtonsoft. Now, let's get back to the genre rating class and add another method with the expando object usage. Let's make the method public, static, that returns a tuple of string genre, double IMDB and double rotten. We'll name it using expando object and provide a single string parameter. Now, we can copy the body from the previous method and make some changes here. First, instead of dynamic type, we're going to add the expando object type here. Also, instead of var, we will use dynamic. The lines for genre and IMDB will stay the same. But before the rotten variable, we have to extract a new iDictionary string object rating variable by calling the dynamic object dot rating. Then we can simply cast our rating to double and return our tuple result. At this point, we can revisit our test class and copy the previous method paste it here and add a few changes. First, let's modify the name to expand the object instead of dynamic. Also, one more thing we have to do is to call a different method from our genre rating class. Of course, we need the using expand the object method. The rest is the same. At this point, we can open our test explorer and run only this test. And we can see it passes. Now, it's time to go with the native library. In the legacy ASP.NET MVC application, we would get a dictionary string object when using dynamic with the native deserializer class JavaScript serializer. That was not a true dynamic thing, of course, but surely offered a bit of flexibility in managing. However, the flexibility of dynamic comes at the price of performance. That's why the .NET team set dynamic aside from the design considerations of system text JSON 
as they want this to come out as a high performance library. And that's not the only thing. Dynamic is currently flagged as an archived component. That means it will not evolve with the latest language features for the time being. So we are not getting dynamic support in the native JSON library shortly. That said, the deserializer will not complain if we use dynamic anyway. Well, let's see it in example. Let's create a new class in our testing project and call it native JSON unit test. Remove the namespaces and make it public. Here we're going to add the fact attribute first. Then let's create a public void method and name it when using dynamic, then deserialize as JSON element. Inside we are going to extract our JSON string in the way we did with both previous methods. Then let's create a dynamic object and call JSON serializer dot deserialize method. Provide dynamic as a generic type and pass our JSON string as an argument. As we see, we can form a dynamic object using the JSON serializer dot deserialize method. However, this object does not recognize the genre or rating property and will throw an error if we try to fetch them. Because under the hood, this is boxed JSON element, a type that is the building block of native JSON DOM. So we don't have the convenience to use it in a truly dynamic way. So let's prove that with genre. Let's call the assert class and then throws any of exception type method where we will provide a simple expression calling the dynamic object dot genre property. Also, let's use the assert is type JSON element method and provide our dynamic object as an argument. Now, with this done, let's find this test in the test explorer and when we run it, we can see it passes, which proves our point. In short, using dynamic with the native deserializer has no added benefit and results in a JSON DOM which has its own API to deal with. As we said, this is something we will see in our next video. So that's it. Please don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons down there if you like the video and want to support us. You can also use that bell button to get notifications from our channel. Thank you for watching and we'll see you again in another video. Until then, all the best.